I have never been a big fan of smart plugs. I like the idea behind them because they enable smart houses not only on a budget, but also for folks who cannot modify their wiring, like apartment residents and the like. However, a few years ago, I decided to do a test on a cheaper smart plug I bought on Amazon, and the results were catastrophic. I was able, through a series of man-in-the-middle attacks, to force this smart plug to cycle its relay at a mind-boggling frequency while under load and destroy the internal circuitry. If you've seen any of my videos talking about security, you already know I like to take things a little further than necessary. In order to be practically secure, I shoot well beyond it. Besides the very small window of opportunity this device gave me for an attack, and the likelihood of such an attack is very, very low, I also don't like that it required a cloud service to function with my other devices. This seems to be the case with a majority of these smart plugs, and since I don't really need them anyway, I've stayed away from them in this house. Until now. This is a Shelly smart plug I recently purchased. Why? Well, I have 38 Shelly relays in various forms throughout my house presently, as well as many other Shelly devices that I've talked about in other videos, or will talk about soon. As I've stated in previous videos, I am not sponsored by Shelly, and I'm not even sure they do that sort of thing. If they did, I'd happily work with them though, because I would be using their products regardless. I like everything about my Shelly relays, motion sensors, and other sundry devices like the Uni and the i4. The two most important things to me are being cloudless and dependable. The Shelly devices I use are not only both of these things, but their Wi-Fi packages and ad hoc UI are outstanding in my opinion. I wanted to know if the same things were true about their smart plug as my other Shelly devices. I would love to have a device I could recommend to friends and viewers who want smart home functionality without having to build or modify anything. I know quite a few folks who live in apartments and would benefit from being able to monitor their power and control their lights or other devices accordingly. So have I found this device? Can I recommend this Shelly smart plug to my friends and viewers, confident in the knowledge that I've recommended a product I would use myself? Well, let's start by getting the device out of the box, plugging it in and setting it up. I'll connect it to my Wi-Fi and attempt to connect it to my home assistant. The device is packaged quite nicely and minimally like other Shelly devices I've purchased. And once plugged in, the device's ad hoc Wi-Fi becomes available, just like the other devices. So A plus for consistent experience and functionality so far. I then navigate to 192.168.33.1 and I'm met with the familiar Shelly interface. Although I somehow managed to do this just after they released a new eye, and I was pleasantly surprised. I like the old interface, but I equally like the new one. Also, they've included in this device the same ability to leave the ad hoc Wi-Fi on, even after connecting to a different Wi-Fi, as well as a secondary Wi-Fi option. This makes me really quite happy. So, this is where everything gets really interesting. This entire setup process took no more than five minutes, but the journey was full of really pleasant surprises all around. First, there's the UI that I mentioned. Then, I realized when I turned on the plug and put a load on it that it reported power usage, too. Home Assistant immediately picked up the device, and while I was connecting to it, no more than clicking a button and telling Home Assistant where I wanted the device to live, I noticed that Home Assistant had also detected my sleep number bed that it hadn't detected before. So I'll be doing a video about that later because that's super handy for a number of reasons. Now I have a smart plug with all the neat features of all my other devices, and it doesn't require a cloud service to work. It has overcurrent protection, power metering, and the same scripting and IoT features as all the other Shelly offerings. I can confidently say I would recommend this device for anyone who wants to add a bit of smart home functionality without modifying wiring or worrying about third-party services if they don't want them. For $25, you'll have a robust device that's as flexible as you want it to be without being more complicated than it needs to be. I'm going to do a video dedicated to smart apartments at some point because I feel like there are a lot of people kind of being left out of the home automation conversation, and that's a real shame. This plug could do all kinds of things, even help even out your heating. I've had plenty of apartments that just had awful cold spots in the winter, but I'll talk about that some other time. I'm not sure if I'll do a teardown of this device because I really like it, but if you're interested in seeing the insides, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll pick up another one and dissect it. 
I'm going to be doing a video update about the Pico W thermostat soon. I'm just waiting to gather some data and I want to add this BME280 and this MCP9808 sensors to the device and update the code base to support them first. In the next video, I'll be talking about power metering and I have a surprise. Shelly reached out to me after seeing the channel and offered to send me a device. There's no arrangement of any kind, they just wanted to send me a device because I talk about them so much. So that's neat. They gave me the option to pick a device. I wanted to pick something that would benefit my audience as much as myself, and that's just what I did. I think you're really going to enjoy the next video. I wanted to mention one more thing. I've taken a new position at a new company, and I'll be starting soon, so I may slow a little moving forward. I just wanted to let everyone know that my long-term goal is still to work on content creation full-time, like most creators, and I will put every minute of my spare time I can into doing so, but life can sometimes get busy and I hope you'll stick with me through possible delays. I have been working on making the site more useful and easier for me to keep up to date, so be sure to check that out from time to time as I'll probably post more detail there about what's going on off camera. Also, you can follow me on a variety of platforms, all linked in the channel banner, and there is a channel Discord if you're into that sort of thing. I hope you enjoyed this video, and of course if you did, give me a thumbs up so YouTube knows I'm likable. And if you haven't already done so, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring smarter circuits.